Welcome everyone. It's pretty exciting to kick off 2024 and set ourselves up with success with our planning today. So we're going to kick off straight away. I'm Nancy from Art Lovers and one of the co-founders and CEO. So we're going to start off with the problem. So if you don't plan, often the year just slips away and we don't want that. Like there's been years where, and you would have experienced this, where you don't know where the time went you're not sure what was achieved, it's just passed by because we probably haven't tracked and we didn't plan and have intentions. The other problem can be that you kind of knew something was going to happen around this period and we weren't pro properly prepared for it as a mad scramble to get it to come together and we don't want that stress. If we can plan around it, that's the best thing. Also, I find without planning, there's no meaningful growth. If you plan for your growth, it's more likely to happen or sadly, sometimes there is great growth, but you're not acknowledging that growth because it hasn't been tracked. You've slogged it out, you've achieved a lot, but you don't really know what you've achieved or was it in the right direction. The opportunity today is to map out your whole year and see that as an overview, to get more organised and plan for success and smash past limits. So when we run this workshop live, people get ideas that they start planting the seeds now and they actually have things planned for a year, two years, sometimes three years in advance. Some of the ideas we come up with actually need to have the seed planted now for it to actually happen in three years. So be open to long-term projects. And throughout the process of, of setting goals and projects, remember progress equals happiness. The reverse is perfectionism and that really does take out the joy. So let's stick to being happy with progress. And it does, it feels good, even if you may not have won something, that you have grown and you can acknowledge that. That gives people, if you're growing, you're feeling happy. So the first thing you need to do is consider what are your four big projects for this year and where are they placed in the time frame. The sheet that I've given you sets up in quarters because we do that in business in the four quarters of the year, also school terms, so probably mostly used to quarters. Think about those as your four time periods and think about your projects. So I've got a list here to start to kick off some ideas. First of all, you may have an exhibition, either a solo or a group, depending on your point in your career. There could be a residency, some travel that you've got planned. Those kind of things can be spontaneous, but most residencies are things you need to apply for and plan for with the travel. Media, so you might be in a podcast, you might um, have an article in a magazine, a feature article with us just online, our book, TV exposure, any of those things that are media related, those would be your project at that time. Um, projects like the 30 day challenge where it doesn't cost you anything, it simply costs you energy and commitment. Do, run that as a 30 days of creating an artwork every day for 30 days, posting it on socials. You might have a small price on it because it's a small piece, like a $200 a day piece and your followers can get engaged with that. Art fairs, uh, painting towards prize competitions like the Archibald, we'll probably use that as an example. Um, not that I'm, exp I'm not actually telling everyone to go for the Archibald, but we'll use as an example because you'll understand that as a project. Studying or working with a mentor, perhaps collaborations you've put in place or maybe it's going to start reaching out about collaborations with a brand that you align with. If they're not aligned with you, there's no point in reaching out or working together. So look for fashion or other branding opportunities, maybe a commercial project. Only look for things that are aligned for you because otherwise they don't really leverage your art career. So you'll have this sheet as a separate attachment. It's a basic sheet and this one's set up for um, Q1, quarter one, and then you can copy it again and use the same one for quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So if you want to print it four times, you'll have your year map or you can um, spend some more detailed time each quarter. So looking at this one, you'll have your overall year goal, or maybe it's even multiple year goal. Then in Q1, 
I only want one thing there at this point. So what your big project is, and you can map out your three other big, big projects. And then the action. So this is the important thing to break down whatever the goal, the project was into each actionable step. So I would, I'm going to use the Archibald as an example. You would need to look up the dates so you're clear on the entry dates and have that research done because if you're missing the dates or you can't make it, then it's no point. You're going to have to push this into 2025. Then the next one would be like brainstorm sitters, approach the sitter because the sitter is very important for the Archie. Um, obviously, you need to be planning your sizes and painting probably three or four paintings, portraits of that sitter, and then choosing the best one. So all those things, and then obviously you'd be planning your socials around it too because anything you do as a project at least deserves five posts, whether that's, um, you can basically share all these stages. So once you know you're going to do it and you've got the sitter locked in, then you would, you know, share that you're going to Ken Doan's house to paint him or whoever it is. Um, you might even share snippets of little bits of the portrait and then delivery of the portrait whether it, you know whether it makes it onto some TVs, I know a lot of people that didn't actually make the finals, but they might have had uh, footage on ABC when they showed what was arriving or another show. So you still might get footage you can share. And of course, if you are in it, then you go hell for leather with all your posts. Okay. So this one here, this is the backward mapping. That's key. You have your big project, and then you break it down into little bits and make sure you're marking yourself off to show your progress, that you've at least started something, you're working on it, and then completed. So that's giving you a little snapshot of where you are with your project. So just to reiterate, so establishing your 90-day plan requires you to backward map having your clear vision and then breaking into smaller achievable goals. Some people will have four different projects, but there's going to be some projects that are going to take a whole year or six months to actually implement. So you might have the same one over um, a couple of different quarters, or it could be your second one if you're going to have two. But let's look at this. some really interesting research I was looking into over the break about efficiency, and it's really shifting my thinking because I am a bit of a person of how many, oh, I can do that as well, take on more, do more projects, I can do it. But this research really shifted my awareness of how much time is lost in switching awareness between projects and how inefficient that can be. So this, this graph here shows the loss from context switching. And down the bottom, you can see the book that it was taken from for the research. Although they're talking about teams for this, I still think it's valid information to consider for individuals. So they had a team working on one project and the percentage of time they worked on it was 100%. So completely focused on the project done. Then they tried the team working on two projects. So the team split the time evenly pretty much between the two projects. But because they're switching between two projects, 20% of their time and energy was lost. So it's still possible because it probably saves if you're employing a team, having a new team and two projects may be aligned. But three, once we get to three, that's when things become very inefficient. So here 40% was lost in switching and there's the three projects, just 60%. For 40% time on the projects and 60% of the time was wasted. Five is, is absolutely terrible. So please, if you're asking a team to do too many things, you know there's going to be so much time wasted, you might as well have actually um, employed more people because they're switching so much that there's mostly, most of their day is actually lost in inefficiency. 80% is lost in switching time and there's just the, the, 20% um, of actual achievement and focus. So this is definitely worth thinking about. 
if you're addicted to doing too many things, think about limiting yourself to one or two big projects and then moving the other projects into different quarters so you can really achieve something in efficiency. If you're the person who's saying, I really do have more than two projects, then which two? Then prioritise with impact and then ease. So if it's a high impact project that's really going to make a difference, prioritise it. Don't let all the little things eat up your time and you never make that big impact. If it's something that could be career changing or deepen your practice significantly, go for those projects. Um, the second project could be something that does make impact and it's easy so you can you know that you can smash out that that little project and then the rest of the time you've only got the one project left. So that could be the way to do it. But impact is always what you would prioritise with. If something's low impact, then like really you probably can get away with not doing it ever. Another influence over the break was this book by John Ackoff, Finish, Give Yourself the Gift of Done. And he has the premise that pushing yourself is not the only solution to reaching your goals. Like a lot of us have trained and done other projects. We've probably got this far in our, our careers by pushing, but he has a lot of research that backs up um, the, well, not, not being lazy, but just taking the edge off pushing too hard that leads to burnout. He um, makes lots of points about perfectionism killing your progress. Sometimes you have such high goals and perfectionist um, ideals that you won't even start the project. So he's suggesting that we demand less perfectionism and the great, that gives us the greater chance to actually achieve what we started. I think this also goes for when you make like commitment and you're going to, I'm going to do this every day. If you're a perfectionist, as soon as you've missed one day, you're like, well, well, that's it. It's done. I've, I've let myself down. Whereas he's saying it's okay to have days off or miss things. And the idea is just start again the next day, continue again. Because we have this attitude of perfectionism, we've already failed because we missed one day on the project or, you know, the warp or whatever the goal was, we missed it one day and we just stop. Whereas he's totally on board with think these things will happen, just start again the next day. Uh, perfectionism will drive you to burnout. So aim to grow and enjoy the process. Perfectionism basically takes the joy out of it too. If you push yourself and you're perfectionist about it, the joy goes out of those projects. So you'll know if you're pushing too hard on a project because you will feel that you've lost the joy. And it could be something you really love. It could even be your painting practice. But you might push yourself so far that you start disliking it. So then you know, pull back from your perfectionism and just give yourself the chance to grow and explore and have fun again. The bigger the goal, the greater the pressure. So he has suggested to, to counter this, once you say what you want to do, it could be a weight loss goal, say. I know you're going to be doing yours around art. So actually, we'll, we'll shift it to, to an art project. You might say, I want to create, you know, four paintings every month. And if you haven't been doing four paintings a month, you've only been doing one, maybe you need to cut your goal in half and say, I'm going to commit to two paintings a month, okay, and that could make it easier. Or it could say double your time. So you're going to have four paintings every quarter, something like that. So give yourself either more time than what your initial goal is or cut your goal in half. If you make the whole, if you get more than what your goal was, great. But the research shows that when the goal is smaller, it actually is more effective in the long run. And art is more of a marathon than a sprint. So the research he was looking at were things like um, running. So they had two, two separate groups they tested or followed rather. So one group was they went really hard and they had a personal trainer pushing them. And every day they were to turn up and I think they had to do, they started with a kilometre. So theirs was like they started pretty high 
and went from there. And the other group had really small goals, like so small, they like kind of a bit ridiculous, like, oh, just today you're doing, putting your shoes on and doing 100 metres and then you're doing 200 metres. So they actually built up so slowly that it was like the goals were so easy and so ridiculous. But after a year, there were more people still running and they're running further than in the the group that started really small than in the group that that was pushed hard at the beginning so I think that's worth us considering just celebrate those little changes because they do build up in the long term and you're probably there in the long run if you push too hard at the beginning once you get fatigued and, and don't do one day you feel like a failure and then often stop Continuing on notes from the book summary, it's, it was a very strong point to remember to put putting time into one area of your life means you will be taking it away from another area. And we all know those stories about artists and sports people that were so focused on their success and their achievement in that area that their relationships broke down or their health broke down. So we're asking people to remember that if you are having a very big goals in the arts in your art projects then you need to also remember that you've got and there are important goals around your relationships and your health so try to balance those and not become one of those tragic cases that they achieve the success in their business or their art practice but they ruin their family relationships or their health and you see that with sports people that you know are so amazing but they said there were like periods where they hated playing that, that sport, even though it was their love initially because they'd pushed so hard. Also, it's worthwhile they had a nice um, discussion about knowing your hiding places and your distractions. So I put down cleaning and watching movies because there is a degree of, um, of like for cleaning for it to be cleaning clearing the mind to dive deep into things but if you're putting too much time into cleaning and your projects are being neglected maybe you can switch and like for me you don't need to clean the windows that regularly you'll get away with it um, maybe a bit less ironing whatever it is maybe you can cut back on some of those and not have those eat up all your time watching movies when you're exhausted i can see how that can eat up time as well but maybe you can just be aware it could be a hiding place for you not to achieve your goals. So look at cutting back there in order to achieve some of your bigger goals. And with the finished summary, um, writing down your goal, the research showed you're 42% more likely to achieve it. So if you can just write down your goals today after this, this workshop, you're already committing it to paper 42% more likely to achieve it straight away. I feel like the next stage will be telling someone about it. So tell a friend, share your journey with another artist. Uh, that would be great. Gives it even more power. And when you measure your progress, your confidence grows. So that's why I've got the sheet starting it, working on it, and, and completion. Because as you see those things build up, you'll see that your efforts and actions are building up to that ultimate goal. And even if you don't get the ultimate, like say we go back to the Archibald, maybe you don't get that far, but into the finals, but, you know, learning the skills of reaching out and having the confidence to talk, maybe um, making those connections with the sitter. Maybe you start working in a different style slightly because of how you did that portrait this year. So there'll be growth out of it, even if you don't get the ultimate goal that you've put down. Well, thank you everyone for sitting through the presentation. If you could reflect on your key takeaway from the workshop, I think that's worthwhile. Maybe it was about the inefficiency of switching between two new projects. Maybe it was just seeing what your big project looked like when you broke it into small, small tasks. Maybe it's very achievable and you can go for it. Um, I know when we did this live, there were some people that did have big projects and they won't achieve them in a quarter. So don't be hard on yourself if some projects are actually started now and they have a long, um, 
a long lead up and that's that's actually fine and natural and it's great because you're already starting planning for your next year so wishing you all a wildly successful year and hope all of your goals are achieved if not have fun on the process bye